Uh, let's start with Kissinger. <laughs> Uh, Henry Kissinger, I'm, I'm laughing, but Henry Kissinger passed away yesterday. Uh, so I wanted to, I, I mean, there's a lot to say about Henry Kissinger. Uh, uh, he is a fascinating character and, and maybe one of the most influential, maybe the most influential foreign policy thinker uh, in the West and certainly in the United States over the last uh, 50 years. 50? Yeah, 50, 50 plus, 55 years. Uh, so, uh, but, but let me focus on two things. First, <laughs> the positive. Uh, he died at age 100. Yesterday, we talked about Charlie Munger, who died at the age of 99. The thing that astounds me about both Munger and Kissinger is that they were sharp, really sharp close to, at least as far as I can tell, to the day they died. I mean, they were active. Kissinger was in China recently. Um, they were active. They were traveling. They, uh, but, but even more crucial than that was they were mentally sharp. They were, they were able to answer questions. Kissinger did interview, interviews, TV interviews. He met with world leaders. I mean, wow. Wow, I, I mean, all of us should 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 do that now. I, what's the secret? Is the real question. I mean, good genes. I'm sure that helps. Bad genes hurt. That's for sure. But what else? I mean, what 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 is that? They stayed active. They stayed intellectually active. Uh, they they never retired. I think that's a part of a part of the secret. Uh, did they exercise? Like I'm exercising like crazy right now. Because Peter Thiel has convinced me that if I exercise like crazy, I'm going to be able to live to be 100 years old and, and super mentally sharp. I have this real suspicion <laughs> that neither Kissinger nor, um, nor Munger exercised uh, uh, as rigorously as I am exercising right now. <laughs> so maybe I live to be 120 and be mentally sharp, right? Uh, so it, it, it is... Um, uh, yeah, I mean, Charlie, uh, L Lawrence says here that Charlie Munger said he never exercised once since he got out of the army, <laughs> which is a long time ago. Um, he avoided exercise, explicitly said he avoided exercise. So maybe we're going around this all wrong. Maybe exercise is bad for you. I don't know. I, um, uh, what did they do? So, so first celebrate the fact that these people, both of them, lived extraordinary lives, incredibly influential lives, very long lives, stayed mentally sharp until the end, uh, physically mobile until the end. I don't think either one of them was in a wheelchair. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, give him, give, give, uh, hooray for that and, and for the potential, therefore, for all of us to, to live such long, uh, successful, uh, and mentally sharp years. Uh, at the same time, you, you have to talk about Kissinger uh, as, as the foreign policy expert, as the guru of foreign policy. Uh, and, and I, I, you know, here uh, I'm not going to be complimentary. Uh, I think Kissinger has done massive amount of da damage uh, to the United States. I think he's done massive amount of damage to the whole field of foreign policy. Uh, Kissinger basically uh, is, a, is what's called a realist, which uh, you could translate philosophically into a pragmatist. Kissinger is a pragmatist in foreign policy, a pure pragmatist. Uh, uh, no principles, no real long-term thinking. The long-term really doesn't matter. Uh, you, you achieve short-term goals, you go for it, you get them done, and, and you move on. Uh, you... Uh, you know, realist means, oh, get off your high horse of idealism, of moral principle, of having a moral code that guides your actions. That's, that's, that's not the real world. In the real world, you have to put aside morality. You certainly have to put aside principle. And you have to really focus on getting stuff done. And that's a typical pragmatist policy about everything in life. So Kissinger really brought pragmatism uh, to the world. Uh, he, he, he did a lot of harm, I think, to U.S. policy uh, uh, from when he was uh, quite influential. 
He was, of course, uh, Richard Nixon's uh, uh, foreign secretary, but he had an impact on the way people viewed foreign policy even before that. Uh, he was the foreign secretary uh, in the Yom Kippur War, where he, he did a lot to help Israel uh, uh, succeed in that war and win that war. Again, I don't think he did that for any principled reason. He did that uh, more uh, because of the interplay between the United States and Soviet Union and the pieces on the map and who's where and who's what. And, and so, so there was no particular love of Israel. Um, although he did famously tell Golda Meir, this actually made it into the movie, uh, he famously told Golda Meir that uh, when, when she was asking for help from America, he says, look, I am, uh, I am an American first, a, uh, the foreign secretary second, and, uh, and, uh, and a Jew third. And uh, Golda Meir said, well, <laughs> here in Israel, we read from right to left. Uh, so, which I thought was an unbelievably clever line if she really did come up with it in the moment. Uh, that's, pretty, that's pretty funny. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, Kissinger is, uh, got a Nobel Prize for Peace. He got a Nobel Prize for Peace for uh, negotiating peace between South Vietnam and North Vietnam, uh, a peace that was then, of course, disappeared uh, just months after he got the Nobel Prize when North Vietnam invaded and took the whole of South Vietnam. I don't think he ever gave his Nobel Prize back because from his perspective, he got his job done. He got a peace agreement which allowed the United States to exit uh, and, and, and not pretend to not care anymore about the conflict. When North Vietnam invaded South Vietnam, the US basically tugged its tail between its legs and uh, ran away. Uh, and that was fine. And uh, if you follow Kissinger's Career that is pretty typical of his career. That is, uh, he he basically uh, again expediency short term. He advised many presidents. He advised uh, many experts in foreign policy. He wrote a lot of books. Um, the one thing you will not find in those books is principle morality. Uh, so we could do without Henry Kissinger's advice on issues of foreign policy. So. I admire his ability to stay cogent for 100 years, um, but uh, I don't, don't, don't admire at all uh, the actual uh, 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 content, right? the, the, his actual advice.